Hey everyone, Kidney Warrior Brick here, and today we're going to talk about the bean. Nah, not that bean. Nah, not that bean. The kidney bean. Have you ever heard someone refer to the kidney as a bean before? Before a couple years ago when I joined some kidney social groups, I had never heard it phrased that way before. To me, a kidney bean is something that used in red beans and rice. But I'm from the South. In any case, let's talk about the kidney. Have you ever wondered what one looks like or what it even does? If you've never seen one before, check this out. Did you know the kidneys are actually located in the back of the body? Which is weird because if you ever had a transplant or know somebody who's been through a transplant, the operation happens closer to the front of the body, so the kidney sits closer to the belly than the back. But the look of the kidney and where it is or where it should be in our body is really only a small part or really doesn't even touch the surface of what makes the kidneys cool. One interesting thing I find cool about the kidney is how it works. Did you know the kidney has six major tasks or functions that it does to keep the rest of your body healthy? Let's go through and look at these. The first one, fluid and blood pressure. Now, if you're familiar with kidney disease and you're in one of the later stages, you know how important blood pressure is and the risk of it with your kidney. But what do the kidneys actually have to do with blood pressure? The main thing is that the kidneys regulate and maintain the amount of fluid in your body. The two main ways it does this is by using two hormones. One, it's called ADH, which stands, which stands for antidiuretic hormone. If you aren't familiar with the term diuretic, basically it means to increase your urine output. If you're having problems urinating, your doctor, especially towards the uh, later stages of kidney disease, your doctor may put you on a, a pill. Most people refer to this as a water pill, but it's actually called a diuretic. It helps you go. This hormone is an antidiuretic hormone so it keeps the fluid within your body. It does this to increase your blood pressure whenever, it's, whenever your body senses that your blood pressure may be dropping too low. The second hormone at play is called aldosterone. And this hormone works pretty much in the same way as the first one, but it targets potassium and getting rid of that potassium. There's many other ways the kidney actually functions to help maintain balance, fluid balance and maintain blood pressure, but these are the two main ways that it does so. I'd really be making a whole video if all we talked about was fluid balance and blood pressure. So, on to number two. Another great rule of the kidney is acid and base balance. You may have heard the term pH or pH balance. And for simplicity and educational purposes, these basically mean the same thing. Now, the big player in the kidney's ability to uh, do acid-based balance is called carbonic acid. It can be pretty complex and confusing if you don't understand chemistry. So, for the simplicity of this video, I'll just say it involves removing acid in the form of hydrogen and it adds it to a base in the form of bicarb, which some people are prescribed by their nephrologist. Hence the name acid-base balance, because hydrogen is an acid and bicarb is a base. There are a few other substances that also help with maintaining pH or acid-base balance, but this is the most one. Other ones that you should know out are phosphate and also ammonia, which is a waste product. The third thing you need to know about the kidney is that it helps maintain and regulate electrolyte balance. And the main way it does this is either by uh, keeping these electrolytes in your body or getting rid of them through urine. The main electrolytes in question are sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, one more that I can't remember at this moment. The next thing we should talk about, enzymes. Enzymes are a big player in the kidney. The term enzyme basically describes a protein that can modify or change another substance. In the case of the kidney, there's two important forms of enzymes, renin and ACE, which stands for angioconverting enzyme. Both of these play a big role in maintaining blood pressure as well. There is a smaller one, and this is called hydroxylase, 
which allows the kidney to control calcium and phosphate to a certain degree. But for now, let's just go on to our next topic, which is hormones. Believe it or not, hormones aren't some imaginary boogeyman or scapegoat for when someone is being moody or difficult. And the kidney produces two important hormones for your body that you need to know about. Erythropoietin and calcitriol, which is basically active form of vitamin D3. Erythropoietin is a hormone that plays a big part in red blood cell production, while calcitriol has a few different roles in the kidney, but its main function is that of calcium balance. It does this with another hormone, and this hormone is called parathyroid hormone, or PTH, which you will see on your lab work. Our last one we should talk about is waste management. Everyone has a job that they're just made to do. Ever hear that before? Plot twist, your kidney fits that exact description. Waste management is the main role of your kidney to get rid of all the waste and buildup that your body doesn't want or need and get rid of it through urine. And your kidney is the decider if it's needed or not. Because your kidney is actually where urine is made. How weird is that? You know, all these six functions are what I find fascinating about the kidney, but there is one more interesting thing that you should know about the kidney. And that, my friends, is the nephron. This is the part of the kidney where the magic happens. Well, most of it anyway. Things like blood pressure management, waste management, electrolyte balance, and even acid-base balance. And this structure right here is where urine is actually made. Right here is where your body is deciding what it needs to keep and what it needs to get rid of because there's too much. Amazing. Amazing. And if you look here in the center of this picture, this contains what is known as the Bowman's capsule. This part of the nephron is called the Bowman's capsule, and it contains a part that you may be familiar with, although you may not even know it. And it's called the glomerulus. The, glomer the glomerulus. Glomerulus. Man, that's a mouthful, ain't it? And this is one of the main filtration parts of the kidney. This part is actually filtering the blood that is circulating your body and coming into the kidney so that it can then decide what it needs to keep or what it needs to turn into urine. So all of the minerals and metabolic waste, which is your food breakdown, containing things like ammonia, things of that nature, are filtered first through here and then a little bit on right here. And they go through here to be voided as urine if needed. So looking back at this sort of tree structure here is where eventually everything that needs to be voided as urine ends up. And this structure leads to the ureter, which then empties into the bladder. And as you know, keep collecting up until you feel that urge and then release it all. And process keeps on ticking. Well, let's take a look back at that Bowman's capsule right quick that contains the glomerulus. This, this is the part that's being tested in your lab work, or an estimate of it anyway. When you go get your blood work and you see that little GFR on the lab, GFR standing for glomerular filtration rate, glomerular being the active verb for glomerulus, filtration because you are filtering things, or rather your blood is being cleaned. Finally, rate. In this case, it's milliliters per minute. And let's take a minute and pause here because this is where a lot of people get things wrong. If you ever joined a social media group and you may have seen somebody talking about their GFR or somebody might have asked, hey, I have a GFR of, let's say, 25. What does that even mean? You'll see a lot of commenters being like, oh, that means you have 25% kidney function. Or they might have even said themselves, hey, I came from the doctor. I have a GFR of 30. Now I only have 30% kidney function. But that's not technically correct. Allow me to use an analogy. If you're going 30 in your car, you're going 30 MPH, 30 miles per hour down the road. MPH is a rate, miles per hour. It's a rate of how fast something is going per distance. 
In the same way, milliliters per minute is a rate. It's a rate of how much is being filtered per an amount of time. Miles, a distance, per hour, an amount of time. Milliliters, an amount, per minute, an amount of time. It is the same thing. It's not a percent of kidney function. Your kidneys don't function at 100, so when you're down to 30, it's not like it's 30% because it's 30 out of 100. In fact, the kidneys, which I'll get to in another video, have a wide range of how much GFR they can produce. One thing before I wrap up this video, let's take one more look at that nephron. Take a guess how big this is. Like, if you see this thing, look at, look at, if you see this, how big do you think this is? What portion of your kidney do you think this thing takes up? Go ahead. I'll give you three seconds to guess. Okay. Would you believe the structure is actually about the size of a quarter? This whole thing is about the size of a quarter. The height of a quarter. Not how thick. Like if you put the quarter on, no, 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 no. The height of a quarter. And the glomerulus, the point of a sewing needle is about the size or bigger than that. How amazing is that? Jesse? Amazing! Okay, so you might be wondering, if my kidney filters all my blood by this one impossibly to imagine structure, how the heck does that work? The short and sweet answer? There are a million of them all working together. Technically, it does depend on your genetics to how many nephrons are contained in your kidney, but it's statistically somewhere between 600,000 and 2 million. Man, wouldn't that be a good kidney to have? 2 million nephrons. But on average, a person has 1 million nephrons per kidney. That's right, you have two kidneys. So, two million. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video. If y'all like learn new things or wanna know more things about the kidney or kidney disease, consider subscribing to my channel. That'll let me know people actually enjoy what I'm putting out there and motivate me to make more of these videos. And if you feel obligated, go ahead and give the video a like. That'll let YouTube know that people actually like these videos and recommend them to other people. But I would appreciate it if y'all would go ahead and leave a comment and tell me what y'all are interested in learning about the kidney or what y'all thought was amazing in this video. For now, take care, warriors.